Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have well, some fun. Nick Collier here again, and uh, we've got a very small job, and I mean literally, I mean small. It's no bigger than that. Uh, a friend uh, from uh, closer to the coast, Santa Rosa, gave a call the other day, and he's working on a plumbing job for someone, and they've got this fancy bathtub, and it's got a fancy, uh, you know, um, spigot, and uh, the spigot went bad, and they went to get another spigot, but nobody has them, because it was made in the 70s, and of course, you know, that company went out of business or whatever, so it's going to cost the owner of the house about two thousand dollars to take out a wall and to take out the the bathtub and to put a new type type of spigot in or they're going to have me make this one little part that's broken in the in the existing spigot and they can put it in for you know a couple hours work well more than a couple hours for me it's about five hours for me and at a hundred bucks an hour that's substantial but here we go. We're going to be off and running with this project. I'll come in close and show you what we got. Okay, here's what we've got. Um, this is the internal uh, makings of the spigot itself. Now this is one of those fancy spigots where you don't go on, 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 on to get a different setting. What you do is a quarter turn. And it's either on or off. And uh, so... The problem was, is most people are used to going on, 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 and somebody cranked it really hard and sheared. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's two little tabs that are supposed to be right there, and they basically just sheared those tabs off. Now, what we have to do is make another one of these. And you can kind of see it's fairly complicated, and it's very small on top of it so here we go I think and and we're gonna work in Delrin this I'm not sure that this is Delrin but it's some good heavy-duty plastic I mean it was certainly uh, injected but uh, you know the original was made in, in metal so uh, we're gonna do this in Delrin and uh, keep our fingers crossed so uh, hang in there with me. Uh, we're going to have some mini fun today. First thing we want to do is to take a piece of Delrin and turn it down to the correct size. So we'll be turning. Now he only needs one of these, but I talked him into two because I said, well, probably the hot water is going to give out at some point in the near future. So wouldn't it be good to have a second one of these and it's only an extra hundred bucks so we'll do two and uh, so here we go And I think this is the first time this little lathe has taken a hundred thousandths in a single pass. But of course, it's plastic. So, continuing. Uh, size wise, how are we looking? Uh, let's take a 40 or so. And our approximate diameter is 775 thousandths. And we're at 875 or so. So we got another 100 to go. So we're at 8 
65 and we want to go to 775 I'll take another 40 okay 35 <laughs> Alright, we're getting close. Let's go to more accurate measuring. There we go. So we're sitting at seven eight oh four and we want to go to seven seventy six so we got twenty five we're gonna slow this speed down the travel speed and we're gonna take Let's take 20 and give it a try. Seven, uh, mm, very close. Six more thousands. I'm thinking we could take the whole six. And so there's two, four. We're going to do five. So we're sitting at one and a half, and this is well, it's not exactly round, so it ranges from two to ninety nine. So I think one and a half is going to do us just fine. Okay, from half to one and a half, so we have just a little bit of a taper probably from wear on the uh, lathe itself. I mean, you know, the lathe was made in 1948, so it's got a few miles on it. Maybe we come in and just uh, mark our territory here
just finding the square and our depth is so here's the uh, the opposing piece and there's the uh, groove for the tab so let's just take a measurement on that and see what we come up with 70 thousandths okay so what did we have 490 490 plus 70 it would be 560 and there's our mark so what we're going to do is just go a little long on the 560 because we got plenty of material okay so now we're just going to cut a groove All right, we're going to take a hacksaw and just cut those off. All right, we got three buttons. Uh, oh, I think what we'll do is put the three jaw chuck back on and trim off the ends. And we're not going to grab it very hard, just barely holding on to it. Looks good. All right. Touch. Okay, so since we've got some angles to cut and some odd shapes to cut, I set the super spacer up. I'm totally centered on the. Uh, on the super spacer and then I'm coming in with my hex uh, collet holder and uh, what I did and I'm going to show you this because it's a pretty cool deal I actually learned this from Keith Fenner uh, on one of his videos he talked about an emergency collet now this collet is just a standard collet with a small hole in the middle, but it's got three pins on the outside of it so that you can clamp it into a collet holder on the lathe and then cut whatever shape you want to cut. Well, not shape because it's going to be round, but in this case I cut a, uh, a you know, the perimeter plus a seat so that the uh, the little plug can has a place to sit down in and land so I can you know make my measurements be right all right well um, the only way I can figure to uh, make sure that every time I put this in it lands in the same spot is to give myself a little exact spacer and we're using a parallel a very small parallel to come in along this edge down here which is really the only consistent part from the vertical so we are at zero right there now the job here is to um, make that little square on the inside and uh, oh my god that's gonna be brutal 
here's the positive side of that square so it's pretty squared off and this thing fits on there fairly snug I think we're gonna be okay and worst comes to worst I can come in because I'm not I'm gonna have a radius on every one of those corners so worst, worst comes to worst I can come in and just trim the corners of of the brass but we'll keep that there and this there all right so now that's even too big ha <laughs> All right, so we're going to work on some smaller bits here, and I've got some little mini ones. That I treated a guy one time for this whole set. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. We'll see if we can pop this open and show it off a bit. but you can see there's just a pile of really really micro bits in here so i think we're going to be able to kind of come up with something that's going to work but for the moment we'll be back okay first thing we're going to do and you can't see the drill bit but there it is right there is uh well it's a mill bit actually but we're going to go right down the center to depth and the depth is Two hundred thousandths, one ninety. But we're, you know, who's counting? So, one ninety. So we come down until we touch, and we're not, you know, this. The depth is not a critical thing. So we're just gonna touch. And we are dead center. And we're going to come down 190 thousandths. Right? Or we'll bring the table up 190. interesting I didn't tighten it up okay but it's just a, a small hole just a relief hole so luckily so that's 190 deep and our next deal is to put the small bit in there we're nice and centered. We'll bring our bit down and we're just going to eyeball it. Hang on. Does this bit, is this bit square in the bottom or not? Yes. Okay. And actually, we could just kind of bring it out a little ways. And there's touching. Now, our square is, how big?
looks like two two ten and we're going to measure the the um, square of the uh, brass because that's more solid and that's two eighteen measure the other side 210. One's 210, one's 218. Of course. Because they didn't care. 210, 218. So let's go with. 178 um, is where we want to go to. Out to the edge. So we are at. Looks pretty square to me. Now I think what I want to do is come in and just make sure that I got all of the little, uh, let's bring it up a little bit further. All of the little grumbles inside of there kind of cleaned out. I'm thinking that looks pretty good. Ah, oh, a little bit big. That's not good. Oh, big by forty thousandths or so. But we got the right, the right action going here. We just need to make it smaller. That's not too bad. We'll come back. Uh, and I made extra ones, of course, because uh, I would get my calculations off. And we were about 4,000 soft, but geez, that shouldn't be... Shouldn't be able to see that. All right, we're dead on now. So let's put our center drill, or it's a mill bit, but we're going to use it as a drill. Bring our bit down till it touches. And then how far were we going down? 190? And rock and roll. Okay, now we're going to come over a little ways. We're going to drop down till we touch. And from zero was 250, and we want to go to 210. So we are 40 thousandths over. So we're going to do 20 thousandths less on each side. So that was 89 was what we went to. So that would be 69, right? Keep your fingers crossed.
So I don't know what's going on here, but um, every time I take one of these little plugs out and put a new one in the collet and put the collet back in the chuck, it's off. You know, 5, 10, 15, 20 thousandths, but uh, it is off. And this needs to be centered, and I guess I'm going to have to answer that okay, phone. Okay, we're back after being so rudely interrupted by the telephone. Uh, and that was a call... Um, the guy really liked to talk, and he had no idea what he wanted. It's, uh, it's a mystery to me. So anyhow, back to this project here. <clears throat> There's a couple of ways to find center. And, and the fact is, is that every time I put one of these in, it's off center. So, and you know, it has to do with plastic. It could have to do with the cutting of the, uh, of the, uh, call it, yeah, whatever it was, it's, you know, it's got trouble. So what we're going to do is what we've had to do. And uh, this is the fourth one. Yes, it is the fourth one. Uh, is we have to find center for each one of them and that takes a little bit longer and there's a th you know there's several ways to find center one is is you put a indicator on here and you go around and find your center which would probably work really well here except that we're so close and everything is so tight and I really don't want to move things because uh, it throws everything off and uh, so the other way, of course, is to put the, drop the table way down and put the uh, um, coax indicator on and indicate it from there. But of course, I've got to drop the table way down and, you know, uh, I just don't want to do that. So there's a third and, and there's probably several more ways to do this, but... Uh, this is the way that I'm going to approach it today. I have to get my cheater glasses in here because uh, this is a close work. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the bit around until I find the flats here and then measure from well, that's not the measurement I want. Here it is. I've got this little flat right here in the center. And if I can measure from there to the bit, and I've kind of already preset the measurement, and then just bring it in until with just a little bit of a gap, just so I can get a little click. And that's probably it. I don't know. You can see it move a little bit, right? So we got about five thousandths movement there. Now we bring it over to this side and we go, okay, that's about ten thousandths. So let's bring our table a little closer. Oops, the other way. And there's no movement at all. Now we've got about three or four thousandths. And this side is loose. So we'll go ahead. And that's it. So just keep clicking it in until both movements are about the same. Now, I'm not getting real close here. I'm within a few thousands because once we come in this direction and we got to do this direction get it in close then it throws the other direction off so I wasn't being real careful that way Get it down a little closer. There we go. Now 
Okay, we got about eight or ten thousandths, and on this side, not so much. Okay, and then there's maybe five. And just a little bit too much. Okay, that's just about right. Rotate it back. And we threw it off just a little bit. Uh, too far. And that might be it right there. Yep, that's pretty good. We'll come back to this other direction. Okay. And that's center. Now, go down till we touch, and then we take it 190 thousandths down, or table up 190 thousandths. Okay, ready? And one of these days I'm going to replace the bearing in this damn thing because it squeals like a, like a stuffed pig. But not today. That should have it. We should be in good shape at that point. Let's uh, bring our bit up, blow it out, come over with our. Uh oh, we're not going to be able to get there, but I can see that it's going to fit just right. So that, I believe, is the last of the Mohegans here. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. No, nope, that's a... That one got messed up. All right. So that's the last one. We're gonna drop it out. And we can test it. Nice tight fit, just where we want it to be. And we're going to reset and uh, start working on the other side.